All right, the uh, the Clippers now one win away from their first ever trip to the conference finals. Be the first? First ever in, in the franchise history. Wow. They're up three games to one after a 128. It's amazing when you start playing the right players. To 95 victory. You know how Houston Rockets. You know how good that Houston defense would be if they could if Clipper could shoot free throws. <laughs> yeah, it's about 150 points a game. 128, 95. Uh, Shaq is here. Uh, Charles is here. Kenny is here. Uh, and we're, we're all going to be here be, boy. momentarily be. with Inside, presented by uh, Kia. It is Inside the NBA, presented by Kia, live from Studio J in Atlanta. Ernie Johnson. Charles Barkley, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Shaquille O'Neal. Here's what's happening Monday night. Hit the air at 7 o'clock. Big game. The number one seeds in each conference, both trailing. The uh, Hawks down 2-1 against the Wiz, and the Warriors down 2-1 to the Grizz. And uh, we'll have that doubleheader for you tomorrow night, followed by Inside the NBA. All right, here we go. Highlights, Houston and the Clippers. 128 to 95. The Clippers with a 3-1 lead in the series. They've scored 117, 109, 124, and now 128. Yeah, thanks to you telling what great defensive team they were. (laughs) So so, somehow this is getting laid at my doorstep. Wasn't you bragging about their defense last week? I wasn't bragging about their defense. I was just saying the analysis, the the uh, statistical analytics. analysis, the analytics, that's wrong. Uh, <laughs> showing them as the number six in defensive efficiency in the regular season, um, which has not carried over into this series. Um, well, if they were that good, like cold hard facts. Hey, Ernie, facts, just man. because you're the best looking guy up here out of four doesn't mean you're good looking. Thank you, Ernie. <laughs> so it's just because you a good sick number six does not mean you play deep, and that's the same thing. It's the margin of error is just too much. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you see the difference in the San Antonio and the Houston series. Why uh, do you have your belt Clippers. out, Shaq? Because the Rockets got that ass whooped tonight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what it was. Oh, you don't even have to get I, 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 I tell you to get back on defense. Can I tell you to Ernie, rotate? <laughs> Ernie, I will tell you this one thing. Tell me this. Sometimes the team just, yeah. just beat you. And Reggie had one of his three things for the Rockets to get back in, in this series. The Rockets have not competed at all this series. Going back to game one. And they came out the same way in game two. And they've obviously gotten mauled the last few games. But that's probably been the most disappointing thing for me. Uh, they have not competed at all. I, I agree. And, and, and then the lack of competition and, and effort, you know, on the defensive end, which we, you saw in the Dallas series, honestly. Uh, but the biggest thing is, and we go, I keep – hitting this dead horse but when you go to a hack of anything because the 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 rockets have three guys in dwight howard josh smith uh and and, uh that they can't put in the game at the same time either so all of a sudden you foul jordan but you have in the game capella prigioni and costas so even when you get the ball you can't score so if you're Golden State did it, let's say, or like when San Antonio did it, they still have their five core guys who can put the ball in the basket. So you have a percentage lead against it. But when you have playing Hacker Jordan and you can't score when you because you can't put your best five guys on the floor because they get fouled as well. It doesn't work that way. Question. So I agree with that. Let me see your stat sheet here. We just want to check the number of free throws that uh the Clippers shot tonight. They shot way too. Thirty-seven for sixty-three. Uh, uh, that's 63 a lot. Sixty-three. I just got a question for you, Kenny. Have you ever beat a dead horse? Yes. That means that you're doing something you shouldn't do. That's the analogy. You're I, doing something that you shouldn't do. Because if the horse is up, alive, you beat it to move. But if you can, like I'm talking about something that I'm could maybe should just let it go and not talk. Yeah, about. You should let that one go. Okay, Get the dead horse. <laughs> okay, but understand the analogy, man. Just understand. <laughs> okay. It's not. It's not. You're beating a That's dead horse. Auburn <laughs> University <laughs> education, right there. Okay. So, okay, take me back to the Houston drawing board now for Game Five in your gym. Well, one I gotta. Have- Better concentration, better defensive effort. I mean, you know, their 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 front line can't guard anybody. Their, their guards are terrible. You know, that's why DeAndre Jordan getting these easy lob dunks. Like he's not even, you know, he's not even really part of the offense. But he's he's getting six, seven, eight points on lob because defense can't guard people, and they just got to come out and just play. They 
Eric, you, you know, uh, I, I know you you bleeped out those analytical stats, but they, these guys are awful. I have a question for you. How about 26? No, but I have one for you. 26 and 17 for Jordan. You have no tonight. fight. You know, 14 out of 34. For I have a question for you. You have a question for me? Yes. If you're guarding the Clippers, what would you do? Guarding the Clippers? Yeah. You're, you're good. Uh, you're the coach now. What would you do? I would, um, no. Okay. What, what would you do on pick and roll situations with, with DeAndre Jordan? Trap it. Yeah, yeah I mean. You did, like, that's my point. You have to still. Chris Paul's, Paul's, Paul's got to be the guy that you, you got to cut off the head of the snake. Yeah, but I, I'm saying, I would if have you take that, the ball, that, that, that takes the report was If you there. double Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan, if you're talking the ball, he's not yeah, going to do anything. I'm sure that. Kevin McHale had those things on the board. But it comes to a point where you have to follow him. And I don't think the Rockets are following a game. I cannot imagine that if you said that in five seconds, yeah, we're going to pressure Chris Paul. Chris Paul. I thought of it. He thinks it. He yeah. thinks. And then you don't do it. Someone has to carry out the game plan that you put and, down. And Kenny has a great point because, Ernie, there is a certain thing called humiliation and embarrassment. And it's on both tonight. No, no. But I'm saying, if, like, if I'm Kevin McHale, I said, guys, we'll give it up 120 points a game. In one game... You make a stand. Now, you might resort back t- to your old bad defensive ways, but just getting called out and getting humiliated, giving up 120 points a game, your p- professional pride should kick in and say, guys, we're giving up 120 points. But they're getting worse. They're, they're, they're giving up more points. So that tells me they aren't competing this series. And, and it started in game one. After they had a week off, and they came in, and they did not compete. And then even game two, they could have lost game two. Tell you what I was doing next week. All right. Uh, one of my favorite descriptions of playoff basketball comes from Pat Riley, who said it's one of two things, winning or misery. The Cavs experienced the misery part on Friday night when Derrick Rose banked in the game winner at the horn. LeBron James described it as heartbreaking. Well, Sunday afternoon in Chicago, LeBron and company enjoyed the other side of that Riley spectrum in what was a mother of a playoff game. We take you to United Center, 2-1 series, game four. There's Derrick Rose, fresh from the game winner. And Pau Gasol, that was bad hammy, that would was not big. play. That was a game changer right there. Cleveland turning it over early. LeBron's turned it over a bunch in this series. And the Cavs tied the series at two games apiece in what was a beauty of an NBA playoff game. 86 to 84 was the final. LeBron goes for 25, 14 and eight, 30 shots he took, one out of seven wow. from deep. J.R. Smith with those 13 points, those three threes in the fourth quarter were huge. Rose 31, Butler 19, the only guys in doubles for the Bulls. And now they go to Cleveland for game five on Tuesday. Here's what they were saying afterwards. Never stop. Never Settle, presented by Hennessy. Uh, Timothy Mozgov, J.R. Smith with contributions in the fourth Timothy quarter. Timothy Mozgov was huge. And uh, what? With six points? He played well in the fourth, fourth quarter. quarter. Uh, I'll tell you the guy who's played great for them is Tristan Thompson. He has. He has. I want to make a point, though, Ernie. Make a point. Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson do a terrific job on the game, but they had a great point today. I think the refs screwed the Bulls, giving them a free timeout. Because they had no timeouts. Yeah. And when those officials went to look at that uh, uh, replay, the Bulls drew up that, uh, the, the Cavaliers the drew up that play. What do, you but, do, what do you do about that now, though? I mean, if you have, if the situation will come You make up the again. guys stay on the court. Okay, how, yeah. You, I mean, you, well, well, there's always a way around everything. But I'm saying, you, no, I'm saying they can't go over there and draw up a play, Kenny. I, I mean, you could say everybody has to stay in the, in the center of the court. And then, yeah. you, then all of a sudden, you know, you would you did you do the hand signal? Then, yeah, you'll be looking at the, th- the third base coach to say, okay, this is what we're right. Doing. Exactly. First of all, yeah. I know that sounds like a good theory, but if you go back and I said I was looking at that play, they didn't know what to do. They had no idea what to do because if you go back and look at the re- Della De- De- Della Della Dova, he was gonna take it out the first time. Then somebody else came and took it out. They had no clue. Then the rest went over there. And all the but cap- they had to because actually the clock was wrong. 
I, so I, he had, but, 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 but I'm saying, can he, he actually got? You want to get the correct play, to, then you know you have to, you know, you go have to do that. But you can't let you can't give them extra time out. You can't give them. Yeah, you can't give them on their sideline. Essentially, another time. So they went and just drew up a game one and played. So the only thing, the only resolution I feel is when you have when a play is being reviewed, all players have to be at midcourt. The soundproof. That's all I'm saying. Into the soundproof booth, you all go. No, you just have to be at mid midcourt. You have to be at midcourt. Now you're screaming from there. It's different from having the ball. Board, draw it up, yeah. looking, and you're screaming and doing signals from the course. What, what do you make of LeBron saying after the game, look, here's the play that David Blatt drew up, and I scratched it. You know, all great players have, have done that. You know, players like that could either make you or break you. Uh, Kobe did it. Uh, Penny Hardaway did it. Chuck did it at no the top question. of the key versus at the Spurs. Yeah. Every uh, great player the ball. Does Sometimes it, so. he Sometimes he's going to make him scratch the players right. for, um, yeah. when West fall. All the time. No, I didn't scratch the play. He would ask me, I said, I want the ball. But he would I, ask you. He I, didn't. I, it's not like Danny Ainge gave me a great story once about Larry Bird scratching a play. He said because we played together in Sacramento. He said uh, uh, Casey Jones was drawing a play up, and he says, "I want the ball to go here, here, here." And he says, and, and Bird grabs the ball and said, "Listen, I don't care what happens. I need to get that ball on the left block." And then Casey Jones said, "Hold on, I'm the coach of this team. I'm the one who does this." He says, well, make sure we get the ball and get Larry Bird on the left block. So he actually did what he said. But great players do it. Oh, you know who else did it? Uh, Jimmy Chitwood said, I'll make it. Remember, he, he, well, remember, let me ask you a question. he was going to be a decoy. Let me ask you a remember, question about Jimmy I'll Chitwood since you bring it up. Who's it? <laughs> How many times you think they filmed that? Jimmy Chitwood missed the first 10 shots I heard. Hey, here, how about this one? <laughs> what was Jimmy Chitwood's real name? The real Jimmy Chitwood. Bobby Plump. How about Bobby this? Plump. Jimmy Plump, Real Jimmy guy. Chip would never really play basketball. That's so exactly right. He was an actor. So let's already. move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it's, it's for real. That was not the right place. What about to use Tyrone? That. Ernie, did you? I need you to hey, use that. What about you, Tyrone? Let me ask you a question. Did you what broadcast about Tyrone, Ernie? Did you broadcast Hoosiers game? Yeah, yeah. I, I broadcast it in black and white. As a matter. Ernie, what about Tyrone? <laughs> what about Tyrone? You know who Tyrone is? I'm not going to fall for whatever you're trying to learn. Just to say Pittsburgh. No. Hey, what about what about what about Michael? Not Jordan. Michael. He missed it. That's why you never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to be previewing what's going on on uh, Monday he, night. He, he scratched the play and missed it. He got fired. He didn't call bank. <laughs> he called game. So you got the number one seed in the West, the Warriors, the number one seed in the East, the Hawks, both trailing in their series two games to one. We hit the air with the Hawks and Wizards at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Let's get previews of those two games, starting with Lewis Johnson. All right, thank you. That was a, it was an interesting uh, what? post-game stuff that you heard from Damari Carroll yesterday, that Budenholzer had put him back in the game for that last possession, and then he said he was physically not comfortable Part of uh, was tight. going in, and, uh, and so he wasn't in there on the, because they, they asked him after the game, and now you hear what they say now about... Let, let, let's be realistic. With seven minutes, I think I saw the final score, with seven minutes and 20 seconds ago, they were down 20. Yeah, they, yeah the, the reserves yes. put a 17 nothing. But, but run I'm saying, on. like, Coach probably thinking this game is over. So he got his reserves in there. They tied the game up. And that seven minutes, you don't know how long it's taken. And do you want to put a guy who hasn't played in probably... A half an hour, you want to put him back in, the, in there cold. I'd have to look at the play-by-play, -play, though. I think he had him in a possession or two before that, however. Well, Carroll had been back in the game. I, I mean, if he's, your I, best, if he's your best wing defender, don't you have well, to have him in with a game on the line right I, there? I would say if it was Tony Allen, I'd be like, okay. But or if it was Dwight Howard for a block shot or DeAndre Jordan. But DeMar Carroll is a good player, but I don't think he's reached the status of he needs to be in the game when key moments are there. He's playing really well for the oh, Lakers. He's, he's having a great, great series. series. Yeah, you know, he but he look. hasn't reached the status of he needs to be in the game. Kobe Bryant would, would need to be back in the game you know, as a wing defender. You know, he doesn't look like a guy that's timid out there, so he must have been, like Chuck said, either tight or really hurt to say I'm uncomfortable to be in there. I mean, I don't see And him, also, I think you know, this is a long story. I gotta take, first of all, I got to take my hat off to the Hawks for coming back. But I got to give the Wizards credit for building a 20-point lead. Without John Wall. Without John Wall. That was the story. And also, I got to give some love to the Hawks because I actually turned that game. I was like, because I actually went to visit my mom and turned the game off to drive to see her. And then on my way there, I said, let me see what the final score of that Wizard game was. 
And it said, and they were only down three, and uh, Muscala hit the three. I said, oh, my God. Yeah. Um, so, uh, listen, you, this shouldn't be a nun. Take, take your hat off to the, the Wizards for winning that game. And Paul Pierce for the, yeah. you know, the bank shot. Yeah. What, uh, which number one seed is in more trouble right now, the Hawks or the Golden State Warriors? Golden State Warriors. Ooh. Because, uh, you know, Chuck's been saying this all year. Uh, me and Kenny really didn't believe him. Uh, yes, they can be beat up on the inside, but when you have exceptional shooters that can pull you out of any situation, and we've seen them do it time in and time out in the New Orleans series when they was down, Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, they hit unbelievable shots. But right now, they're getting beat up inside and their shots are not falling, and it seems to me they're facing a little adversity, hmm. something we haven't seen all year. So i um, anxious to see how they're going to react to that. And, you know, Steve Kirk made a great comment. The moment of truth for our team is up now. So, you know, this game is, is, is a must-win game. Those one, Splash Brothers combined one. in that New Orleans series, they combined for 59 points a game. It's 38 against Memphis. I'm sure of, of two things. Mark Gasol and Zach Randolph going to be on the block tomorrow night. That's a constant. On the other end, I got two of the best shooters in the world. Can they make enough shots? I know Zach and Mark going get, to get it every night. Those, they're the best center, power forward combination in the NBA. They are both terrific. The, uh, Mark's a great passer. They can't match up with him or Zach. It's just a matter if the Splash Brothers can make enough jump shots. And I always tell you, I'm going with layups over jump shots all the time. No disrespect to anybody. Well, Mike Conley obviously has made this great. He's terrific. Uh, in the series when he's on the floor. But if I say who's in the most trouble, I would say Atlanta Hawks, only because there's a guy named John Wall that might show up. And if he shows up, then it even gets worse. It doesn't get better. Where you could say our shot can come. And we might get the game at a pace where our guys get comfortable uh, shooting the basketball. And um, Clay Thompson just has to play better, honestly, as well, because he has to be the all-star because he has the best defender on him most of the night, and that's Tony Allen. And he has to have an advantage against him to loosen up things for Steph Curry, let, which let, is vice versa. Let me say this one thing yeah. about the Golden State. No, they're the best backcourt in the NBA, but they got that guy he just mentioned guarding Klay Thompson. But on the other one, they got Mike Conley, who's the most underrated player in the NBA. So they got their hands full, too. So it ain't like they're out there playing against the Washington Generals. They playing against a great defender. And I told you, what's the one thing? What team need to be have? You got to have a great player. They got a bunch of great players, and they got to have, have a crazy, crazy guy. guy. Don't you and play for the Generals? You Tony Allen. That's my I, I, Tony Allen can play with me anytime. And uh, Upper Dog uh, is is telling us that uh, John Wall probably not playing in. Uh, no, it's no in need. Game four. One more rest. All right. Get more. Uh, coming back with more in just a second. You're watching Inside, presented by Kia. You love Inside the NBA? We hope so. Then make sure you're following NBA on TNT on social. 